It is widely accepted that the superior tone of the EMG gramophones, made by the EM Gin Company, derives, among other things, from the horn made of papier appliqué. As an experiment, I made a gramophone with such a horn, which I called EMG Experimental Monmouth Gramophone No. 1, which see on YouTube, choosing as the starting point the trademark model, well known from the painting. This turned out more successful than I had expected. When a sound wave goes round a corner, it necessarily distorts or attenuates, so that the optimum path between the sound box diaphragm and the horn is the one with the least bends in it. It was also stated by experts sometime around the 1930s that the optimum length for a horn is about 8 feet. I do not know how they reached this figure. To test these theories, I made a big brother to experimental gramophone number one with a horn of papier appliqué eight feet long. Everything had to be scaled up. The travelling arm is two inch by one inch mahogany. The rotary joint involved a strong rotary bearing with a door hinge used to allow up and down movement. The motor, base plate and turntable are a Columbia 100 and the sound box is a Columbia number nine. The horn is 30 inches in diameter and weighs 11 and a half pounds, but with the sliding lead weight on the arm, the tracking weight at the needle is adjustable between half an ounce and five ounces. The horn was painted using polyurethane varnish. Before anyone asked, it is not for sale and I am emphatically not going into production. In any case, it is far too large for the average room. There follows, for purposes of comparison with experimental Monmouth gramophone number no. two, which you see on YouTube, a recording of Gili singing In Gemisco from the Verdi Requiem, which has not been subjected to any kind of clean-up procedure.